All right, this is a quick little update my Formictopus species greens. Um, I picked these up from Pet Center USA, from Paul Pet Center USA, in October of 2015. They were like, I, I want to say three quarters of an inch long. Just went to double check my notes and I didn't have it written down, but they were pretty small slings. Um, I set them up in the 16 ounce deli cups, like the ones we have here. Unfortunately, they're not the transparent ones, the new ones that I just bought. So uh, as you can see, they're very difficult to see through. So I will um, encourage people that when you do try to buy the deli cups online, make sure that they are the clear ones, totally different. And these are some of the clear ones over here. As you can see, you can see right through them, no problem. Except for that one down there is one of the cloudy ones. So anyway, I set them up with some deep, you know, moist substrate. And as my Formictopus usually do, they burrowed underneath the cork bark and they kind of sat there with little ambush predators. These things are voracious eaters. They're grown like little machines. Um, I have one that I'm going to show in a moment. They just molted. Um, I'm going to go ahead and feed one of them now. Now I have them, if you notice, inside another larger enclosure because these guys in particular, and it, it's funny because my Formictopus species always have a fantastic feeding response, but these guys have gone out of their enclosures several times while tracking down prey items. So usually they perch right up on the edge, but one of them chased something, basically went out of cricket, went right up over the edge and outside of it. So I've gotten something else so that's contained if it does get out. So I'm going to go ahead and I've already done myself a favor and have the roach in here. And he's got it. Sorry about that view there. <clears throat> so as you can see, they eat. I'm going to go ahead and focus on this very, very well. These guys grow very quickly. I know I've mentioned this before. It's one of the reasons I love the Formictopus species is because they not only molt often, but the amount of size gained between molts is impressive. They take down prey items, um, generally speaking, the size of their own body lengths. I've seen them do it. I had a situation when I was feeding these guys once where I didn't have any smaller crickets. I didn't feel like cutting them up, so I dropped in kind of a medium cricket, and it took them down no problem. Now, one of the things I've been watching, and I've you know, made this comment many, many times, is there are several um, Formictopus species, and then followed by a color. So we have species blue, you have species purple, and now we have species green. And one thing that I've been kind of looking out for is to see that if some of these end up being subspecies of other Formictopus species. So, for example, Cancerides... And here's my newest freshly molted one. Canceritis, um, people have said that they had purples, purple females, come out of the Canceritis sack. So I, I kind of wonder if someday that the purples or some of the ones that are on the par uh, market that are marked as purples end up just being a subspecies or a different color variation of Canceritis. For these guys, I will say this is, um, you can see the coloration. Hold on, let me just... Uh, get a clearer shot you can almost see a greenish tinge of a tinge to the legs this is something i haven't seen in my other species and i have uh, right now i think seven different i'll double check and obviously make a note of it but i think seven different from species and this one definitely has a look all of its own so hopefully i can get this to uh there we go you can see just a bit of green in the legs there now i don't know if this will change but i will say i always look for these guys to show something that looks a little different than the other species um in the same uh genus because i am kind of in the back of my mind i do believe that a lot of these guys once the taxonomy is sorted out will just basically be different color variations of the same species but i will say so far so good with this one it is looking a bit different than some of my other formictopus species which is quite cool um I keep these guys, again, the same way I keep all of my tarantulas, about um, low 70s to mid 70s in the winter. I do have supplementary heat and uh, mid to upper, mid 70s to upper 80s, uh, to mid 70s to 80. Every once in a while I hit 82 in the summer when it gets a little bit hotter. I do keep them moist as slings. This seems to be less of an issue the older they get. So you can see now it's a little bit dry in there. They do have water bowls. I got to fill this one back up again. But I don't mind letting the substrate dry a little bit in between. This one did dry out a little bit in between. It just molted. I took the molt out a moment ago. It's actually right there. And it molted completely fine. So you'll read a lot online. I've had some people contact me and go, oh, I, I really love to get the Formictopus species, but I don't like to deal with moisture-dependent spiders. And it's I haven't found them to be moisture-dependent. Some of them will hang out on the moist side if you give them one, but they all seem to do well on moist or dry substrate. Still, to uh, just be cautious, I do usually keep part of it um, moistened down, especially when I see them getting ready to molt. In this case, it dried out a little bit. It is actually a little moist down the bottom. You can't really see it, 
but uh, they molted just fine. So again, this is Formictopus species green, no common name that I know of yet. We'd be curious to see, uh, I, I was talking to somebody that was in Europe that said that they believe there are three different, they're looking at three different species right now that produce the adults with the greenish tinge. Now, I don't know how much validity there is to that, but this guy seemed to be pretty comfortable with the fact that they're not sure where the green ones come from specifically. And um, encourage me, and I encourage others, that if you do get species greens, try to keep the stock um, from getting mixed with other species greens you may buy. So unfortunately, if I bought, um, unfortunately, if you buy them from one place, you want to make sure that if you breed them, you use the same stock that you got from that place for the time being until they sort everything out. Otherwise, there could be crossbreeding and uh, it could become even more of a mess uh, taxonomy-wise as it is now. So for this species green.